Let us pray. Father, thank you again for this day you bless us with. Thank you for each one here tonight. Be with this commission as they make decisions. Make decisions. Be with those men and women that's fighting for our freedom, serving our country, that we might stand here today. Pray, salute the flag. Go with us this night that each one will have a safe journey home. Praise and thanks for it all in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. This is a regular meeting with Henry County Board of County Commissioners being held on Tuesday, May 25th, 2021 at 5 p.m. in the County Commission Chambers in LaBelle, Florida. In attendance are Chairman Mitchell Wills, Vice Chair Emma Bird, Commissioner Daryl Harris, Commissioner Raymond Iglesias, Commissioner Carson Turner, County Administrator Jennifer Davis, County Attorney Mark Lapp, Clerk Kimberly Barano. Thank you, ma'am. If you uh, wish to speak tonight, if you would, grab one of the cards in the back, fill it out, and bring it up to Ms. Perrineau, and she'll make sure at that time, when that portion comes up on the agenda, we will get you called forward. Uh, first thing on the uh, agenda tonight is under bids. Uh, a is quotes for placeholder recommendation for re-roofing Henry County Emergency Operations Center. Chairman, quotes were received, and we're staff's recommending that you award the contract to Clyde Johnson. In the amount of 162,300 waivers. So moved. Uh, motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Harris. Any further discussion on the board? Uh, yes, sir, Chairman. Um, I spoke to Tim Johnson with Clyde Johnson uh, Contracting. So the base bid, which is $63,000 or $61,000 higher than the mm -hmm. alternate bid, we're two months out of trying to get supp uh, supplies. Construction industry being the way it is, those that price may change from now till then we might get the uh, materials earlier we might get them later we're going to put put us right in rainy season uh if we have storms going on and we need that building which we will it's going to make it a tougher job to do on the bid alternate you're looking at a four to five day uh turnaround on materials and he could start that job end of next week once you get contract signed so it's a sixty-one thousand dollar savings um, it's going to cost him profit, but he actually thinks that the bid alternate is a better product, um, and he likes it. Now, the warranty on both are the same. It's 20 years from the manufacturer for parts and labor, but I want you to consider that, considering how tough it is to get construction materials. So one can get it and one can't get it? It's the same contractor. He's got, he's got either, he's won both bids. Oh, okay. So... But the, the alternate bid is a what they call a bid alternate, which is a different um, uh, process of the different roof. Material. Is that right? Different material. Different material. Right. One's a two-layer to bituminous roof, and like on the courthouse here, it's like a two-layer. And then the the other one's a, I can't say the name, thermoplastic, thermoplastic. polyethylene. It's one layer, is my understanding from the architect. It meets the same spec. It meets the specifications for the wind loads. They can warranty it. Um, they don't. I mean, if you're going to do it, if you're going to do, they call it TPO and use TPO. If you're in a TPO roof, this would be a prime candidate for one. Um, you just have to be. You can walk on it. You have to be careful. There shouldn't be a lot of foot traffic up there. But it's, the other ones, the tried and true. And what's the administrator and what does staff say? If, if I may, um, we had this conversation earlier. this you know for for some of the comments you just said Timing and pricing however I'm sorry however um, what what we had concluded was I asked what do you all recommend and I asked what the architect recommended um, it's my understanding Shane correct me if I'm wrong that the architect recommended what what our recommendation was yeah is that yes, correct yes ma'am it and it's my understanding that this is a two ply versus a one ply and yes. with it being the EOC of all buildings that we have, being the EOC, um, I felt more comfortable going with this recommendation because I felt like it would be, um, like Shane made a comment, tried and true, or, or, or what your comment was, we, we knew more about it. Um, there was a lot of unknown with this other 
a type of roof, if you will, and I just, it's just so important because it's the EOC and, and I was uncomfortable with the other recommendation. No further comments? Second the motion. We've already got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Chairman. Bids, quotes, placeholder, recommendation for survey and services for the Harlem Memorial Gardens. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Bird, second by Commissioner Glacius. Any further discussion on that? I have one question. Yes, sir. Are we, are we going to have enough time to get some lots marked? I know they're getting yes, very... Yes, we, we have about 100 lots, Okay. and we should have enough time to get... Everything going good. forward then, and this will allow for future long-term planning. I don't know where the boundaries are. The some of the drawings that we have, right? Roads are in different spots. Buildings are in different. We get all this located, and I think some of the blocks I have on my drawings doesn't match up with what is actually in the field. And we're going to locate some blocks and stuff and get it all squared away. Perfect. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. RFQ placeholder recommendation of awarding aviation construction engineering inspection services for the taxiway B extension, phase one. Do I have a motion on that? So moved. Second. By Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Byrd. Is there any discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parker. It brings us to the consent agenda. We have a motion? Move to accept. Motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Byrd. Any further discussion on the... All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Going to bring us down to public hearings. Sure. No question, I recommend RZ 220-0012. Have a motion? Is that what you, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Yes, sir, we got a motion. I'll second the motion to support uh, the rezone for um, RZ two zero dash zero zero one two. Okay, this is a hearing to the public. We have a motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Turner. Uh, this being a hearing to the public, does anyone like to speak to this at this time? Any further discussion on the board? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Ms. Richter, I do not see this on the agenda, but um, maybe I'm missing it. For tree protection ordinance? Yes. Hello. I'm Beth Richter. Um, I live in Hendry County, and I'm very concerned about the trees with all the current construction going on. Um, it's a wonderful prosperous thing, but at the same time, there's been a lot of clear cutting. Right in our neighborhood um, on Captain Hendry, there's three different constructions going on, and across the river, there's three more. And there's really very little concern for the trees. Uh, trees reduce air pollution and sound pollution. They um, are for wildlife, of course. They um, enhance the aesthetic and property values, and they contribute to the greater uh, community image, pride, and quality of life. The city of LaBelle has the tree on its symbol, and I think the county ought to embrace that, along with the city ordinance for tree protection. Um, Inspector? Yes. The, the city of LaBelle already has an ordinance in place, correct? The city does. Yes, ma'am. I would like the county. Yes, ma'am to pick up the ball and go with it. They need to give a nudge to county planning to write a code so that the county can make it ordinance. I think uh, we already have that in our code. It's not in there. So when that someone comes in for a project, I know you have to leave X amount of trees. I don't we cleared out in Port LaBelle. They made us, they told us we took out too many. Ah. I, they were evasive. They were pine trees, uh, lightning rods. Okay, whatever the code is, it, uh, if, you look at development there by two P's. Mm -hmm. They took out a ton of trees. They did. And it it did, it couldn't be in code as many it, trees as they took out. I'm glad so you there's agree. So there's a way that you can break the code, I guess. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I think, I think we have a resident um, that is coming to us with something that, you know, I've used this story multiple times. I'm still haunted at when DOT came in and clear-cutted everything heading out um, 
out east, out of town. Um, you know, um, call me whatever you need to give uh, a bad light on environmental protection, but um, I do think this is something that we should look into. I don't know what we have. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I don't know the exact details of uh, what our uh, ordinances and or rules and regs consist of today, uh, but I, I think that this is something that is an easy fix, and I'll give the example of um, Calisto and Rock Enterprises uh, when Calisto purchased the uh, the easement in the Pioneer community on the 42-foot canal. You know, I, I had a very aggressive conversation with them privately about, please don't don't go in there and just, you know, as you as you sell your fill, which is 100% within the rights, as long as you don't go below grade, if you stay up surface. But there are pine trees in there that have to be bumping 80 to 100 years old. And I just, you know, Calista, just go around them. You know, it, it, okay, so it leaves a, a few yards of dirt there. That's fine. And so I just think that it's something that we need to look into because um, those beings have a right to live. And I'm still disgusted with myself that we didn't, we didn't have a more aggressive conversation with FDOT about that as you head out. And we took a lot of grief from that community, and rightfully so. They were just mad because of the noise. Um, I, I think this... A uh, fine woman here is asking us to take something in consideration, and I think that we should do it. So, can we ask staff to look into it and then come back? Can we look at what the city of LaBelle has and, and you know, find something and uh, you know, have a middle ground there that we that we all feel as if it's a it's a win for everyone. Whatever they got, they just no. took down oak tree. All Oh, and that may be a point where we, we look at the model they have and then get, be a little more aggressive with it. At least we have a we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, look, you know, I don't know if y'all know the Kmart Plaza in the city of Clouston. They hired a landscaper to go in there. There were oak trees that were, I want to say, 12, 15 years old. They're there one day, and they're all gone the next. To me, that, you know, you talk about property value, and that devalues an entire Absolutely. area. Took the look away from it, but the trucks was hitting it. The uh, well, they need to trim them because you ain't got to. You, you don't have to kill it, you know. And so, <laughs> yeah, we don't need board action. We can just uh, for direction of staff to look into this. Can, can we put a time certain to it? Absolutely. To the July meeting, <laughs> ma'am, if you try to hold us accountable and come back, we sure would appreciate it. I'll do that. All right. Uh, what Thank is the you. meeting date in July so we can? Only have one, so let's go ahead. That way, she'll know the exact date. That way, you you're not leaving here wondering. So, we better. It's going to be just one and one. So, we better make it August. The first meeting in August. Yeah. Can I put the timing in perspective? Um, because this is a um, this would be an amendment to the land development code that requires <coughs> um, two public hearings and also an LPA meeting. And July, we're pretty. Um, Similar. I was just thinking that y'all bring some a rough draft back to us. To yes, ma'am. And that's great. We yes, can do that in yeah. the at the end of July. Okay. I mean, that's that's not a problem because okay. we've already had something um, on the shelf that we've been wanting to bring forward, but we've um, we've um, we've had some other challenges uh, with uh, land clearing that we've had discussions on, and um, right now we're in the throes of. Of having um, discussions with folks coming in for land clearing permits, and um, you know, asking what our requirements are for tree preservation, or on the other converse is they don't want to preserve anything. No, they just want to and, whitewash it. Right, yeah. and and we don't want that. And right now, with our uh, Montour land use study, uh, we had in that land development code that we were proposing uh, the preservation of heritage trees, but what we've decided is I'm pulling that out and I wanted to come forward with a countywide ordinance that wouldn't just apply to Montura. And so that that's right on we're right on the cusp with that and you know this is perfect timing. Uh, you look you drive through Pioneer or Ladika and you'll see where they, they come up, they buy their property and you know they put a small <laughs> cat or you know a little excavator out there and it's gone. So right. Well, Ms. Okay. Rickner, thank you for bringing that thank to you. us tonight, and we will have something for you um, probably in August. Is that what we're looking at? July. Or July, we'll have a draft, and then we can move forward from there. Okay. There's a, a website, um, Guidelines for Developing and Evaluating Tree Ordinances, isa-arbor.com. That might be helpful. 
Again, isa-arbor.com. Writing it down right now. Okay. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bring us to staff reports. Clap. Chairman, members of the board, uh, we have this opioid litigation memorandum of understanding that's been put forward by the state of Florida. Uh, you may know the state of Florida filed a suit against the opi opioid manufacturers and distributors, uh, alleging that you know, they caused harm to the uh, people and to the governments through um, over promotion of the drugs, promoting dependency, and you know people. So uh, this is a settlement, a draft settlement that they, the state has reached with the drug manufacturers, um, and it calls for some distribution of monies to all the local governments. Um, I put the dollar amounts in there. It's a range. It's still got, you know, some uncertainties about it, but, you know, you can see there our annual share is projected to be as high as 23000 and change, uh, 12000 and change for Hendry County, and then... Um, the uh, cities would also get an allocation much lower. And so, um, you know, some counties and cities filed suit themselves against the opioid manufacturers. We didn't. Um, but, you know, we get to share in this settlement that the state is reaching. And uh, the more local governments that join up, the state says the higher the return for every local government because the drug manufacturers want to be want to capture as many local governments and have them on board with this and not because you are foreclosed from filing your own lawsuit later if you sign on to this. Uh, so they have an incentive to get more people on or, or more governments on and, um, and then give you more money. Uh, so that's the proposal. We've not discussed this previously, you know, in any context. You might have, you know, heard about it at FAC, you know, them discussing it. But my recommendation is to move forward with it. So resolution to do that. So move. Thank you. Motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Bird. Any further discussion on the board? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Old business, or you have you have some more to walk on with, I believe? I have an agenda addition of the letter uh, before you regarding the process. Um, ask Then we did a um, update, and then it's also before you. And we'll make a motion to approve the letter as presented, um, dated May 25th, 2021, to Colonel Andrew Kelly, Commander of Jacksonville District for U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, in regards to Losum. Motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Harris. Is there any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, business by district, Commissioner Glacius. Yes, um, Memorial Day is coming up, and Christine Peterson, who runs the CHS Public Safety Service Academy, every year does a what I call a special project with her students and volunteers within our community. And um, on Saturday, she'll have the public come out and place flags on all veterans out in Ridgelawn Cemetery in Coolston. Um, I've been working with Alan and his crew prepping the, the cemetery, as they all should be. Uh, but it's a it's something that's special to me since I've gotten my son involved. So <clears throat> Jason Thompson recently went out there um, on Monday and pressure cleaned the park benches and um, garbage cans actually last week for us. And then my son's going out there painting them before Saturday with some enamel paint that uh, Alan got so he can get some uh, community service hours. Not because he's in trouble, <laughs> but, but you need that. You need 25 hours every year to graduate. He's good. Dad, I'm a freshman. I can just get him at the end. So I'm not letting him do that. So anyway, if you're around, come out and uh, be part of the, the ceremony. That's it. Bird? Um, well, just want to continue to pray for our community. The Tigers beat the Glacier Central Raiders. I don't know how to act. <laughs> Things are better in the universe. Did you say the Cowboys or Glade Central? I mean, you sound like my who? Um, who who did LaBelle play in the spring game? Gateway. Gateway. Oh. One lost forty to twenty-seven. Lost forty to twenty-seven. Forty-six. <coughs> forty to twenty-seven. Yeah. Well, um. um I'm excited. I, I was uh, just so happy to see that spring game occurring. 
I'm just thinking back to last year, those young people didn't get to have all that, you know, spring completely gone. That's, you know, I made the comments, Ms. Bird, it's embarrassing to say this, but you remove athletics from the discussion. And, uh, my truancy rate would have even been a lot more higher, but, you know, you couldn't go to practice if you didn't go to class. <laughs> so, um, uh, and I tried that, by the way, but it didn't work. But um, so that that was great to see. And um, just, um, you know, there's a lot of things going on. It's good to see everything getting back to normal. I'm so excited about that. And uh, I, uh, I, I know we're going to have a reduced schedule, you know, in June, July. But we still we still need to keep the you know we still need to keep our foot on the gas pedal. I know y'all have the the line of credit. You have a handful of projects uh, that y'all are you know y'all are queuing up, and so when we can get that list and just uh, you know keep us keep us up to date. And then Shane, I was wanting to know when you thought would be a good time to have another update on the uh, the road for Wheeler Estates, and uh, just you know giving us a heads up on that. And I, I wasn't calling you up or anything. I was just, you know, wanting you to think about that and then bring something back for us as I'm interested in that. Well, I could give another update when we bring the, we got an RFQ out right now for design consultants, and I'll be bringing you the recommendation from the selection committee on who to pick for design consultants. We haven't done anything yet other than we got the RFQ out, but that'll be, I think we'll be at the, we may make the June board meeting for that. If yeah. not, it would be July, but I think it's June. Um, Henry County Fair uh, feels confident enough that they they don't want to say that they have the money to front all of the flagpole coming into Cluston, but they feel they're you know within inches of it of the goal line there so uh, probably we'll start re-engaging that conversation so Jennifer uh, be looking for that email and obviously you know I would just look to have a CC between you and Randy in those discussions and how we want to move forward with that one I think, it's gonna, I think it's going to be in the mid 30s yeah what are they shy I don't know yet yeah I think Randy we'll make could out. make the difference up. Well, listen, Daryl Harris hadn't sold me any barbecue tickets all year long. I might be able to <laughs> make up that difference. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I haven't had a hundred dollar ticket from Daryl. I don't know. How I'll be. I'll, I'm actually looking forward to that coming back. You know, <laughs> most people walk up to you and have their hand out to shake your hand. He hands his tickets. <laughs> And he doesn't. He doesn't say, "Do you want to buy one?" Doesn't he ask says, how many. Just bring your check to the next <laughs> board meeting. So. Okay, that wasn't part of the conversation. We love you, Daryl. <laughs> next year. Um, real quick, um, the only thing I'm getting beat up on is 14 no acres, Chief. I'm uh, sound ordinance, speeding. I'm getting many calls about the the speeders out there, and they're saying parties are going on like crazy. So. If you could help me out on that, I'd sure appreciate it in that area. Um, Fort Dino Road, same same complaint about speeders. Um, so if you could just kind of help me out there, that's really all I got. Um, everything else, Shane and I spoke earlier, if the lights are coming like we talked about, he's, he's moving forward, it's good. We talked about Wheeler and several other things. So Shane's been on the ball since Mr. Harris got off the sidewalk, so I'm getting on the road. So. <laughs> Get some work. <laughs> yeah. So I believe that's it. Is there any further comment from the audience before we close? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>